everyone, it's Dr. Dickinson, and in this video, I am going to be demonstrating how you can unpack an NGSS standard. Now remember, the NGSS stands for the Next Generation Science Standards, and these standards are to help guide our instruction. They don't tell us explicitly what to teach or how to teach, but they give us the guidelines of what students should know developmentally, what they should be able to do, what they should, how they should think about concepts, and what skills we should explicitly teach, so what knowledge they should know. So let's get started. I'm gonna get look at this performance expectation as a third grade Earth and Space Science, which is what the ESS stands for, and it's performance expectation 2-1. So students should be able to use and share observations of local weather conditions to describe patterns over time. So essentially, students are gonna be observing the weather and they'll be able to describe the weather conditions over a period of time. So if we look at the student science and engineer practices, remember there's eight science and engineer practices which are what we want our students to do. We want our students to be doing these things. Science is all about doing, not just listening to us, just like you're listening to me, and I know I get boring, so I just had to make these videos somewhat exciting. Um, we want our students to be obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information, okay? So in third grade, this is something that's gonna build on their K-2 experiences and help them obtain information, articulate information, and evaluate it. So it's a little bit more higher order thinking. In kindergarten, they're looking for patterns. Now they're analyzing those patterns and they're making conjectures, or they're looking at those patterns and they're making predictions and they're analyzing those patterns to see what they can, um, what evidence they have, what statements they can make about those patterns, okay? So the DCIs, the discipline core ideas we want our students to have in relation to this performance expectation, or PE, is that climate describes a range of an area's typical weather conditions and the extent to which those conditions vary over years. Okay, so we can look at climate, we'll have to know about the seasons and what happens during each season and how that climate is part of a region and the patterns of the weather over time that can predict what the temperature is. All right. So based on these DCIs, I wanna start thinking about what I want my students to understand. I want my students to understand that climates in different, there's different climates in different parts of the world, okay? And they will understand that these climates also influence the kinds of plants that live in the area and the kinds of animals that also live here. So climate actually impacts not just me in terms of what I'm gonna wear every day, right? But they're also gonna impact the plants and animals. And really that's the essence of science is this interdisciplinary space where everything's impacted upon each other. So we want our students to really get the range of that and think about just the human activity, the plants and animal activity. So maybe we're gonna host several activities. I might even just come in dressed up and it's a, you know, it's like a hot, warm day, a spring day, but I'm wearing my heaviest coat and my ski hat and everything. And my students are probably going to start laughing at me, but then that will lead us into a conversation about climate and what are some patterns. And even though I might not have looked at the weather report in the morning, I should be able to make predictions about what to wear every day based on patterns and based on what I know about climate. So my students will need to make observations and they will need to be able to think about patterns. And patterns are obvious to us as adults, but they're not obvious for our kids. So some of the knowledge and skills that I'm going to explicitly teach in, related, in relation to this DCI and performance expectation is I want my students to be able to describe the different climates. And so I'm gonna give my students access to rich words and vocabulary and, and ability to articulate and think, pair, share, and talk and work in small groups about different climates in our local area. And maybe we'll compare those to different regions of the word. But let's start just local first, right? And having our students describe our climate. So we're gonna get a chance to go outside, right? And talk about the climate and talk about 
maybe at certain points throughout the day, how the climate even changes. It's interesting for the kids to know when is the hottest point of the day, how the climate changes, just even in the span of, you know, the seven, eight hours that we're in school. And the mornings tend to be cooler. And then by, you know, afternoon, between like 10 and 2 is the hottest point of the day and how that climate can change. So we might even do some, not just some observations, but we might even go out with our thermostat and record some temperature. Then we'd have some real data and some real evidence to support the assertions that we're gonna make about climate. Some ways I can inter, inter, integrate other disciplines. Well, I talked about math already. I talked about data collection and how we can use thermometers and, and start analyzing some data. We might have just our temperature range for the entire day. We can organize that from least to greatest. We could do it for the entire week and we could find the average. We can find the percent of change we can do so much with the data. And you know I love to talk about math, but this is science. We can also integrate English language arts. We can bring in a host of books in relation to weather and climate and climate change. Um, and my students can compare and contrast. They can take notes. Um, we can you know, even go outside different parts of the day and do some physical activity and do some PE and take note of when's the best time to exercise outside. Okay, so different ways that you can integrate disciplines, get your kids up and moving. There's lots of awesome songs um, in relation to climate. You can even sing it in Spanish. Lluvia, vete ya, rain, rain, go away. Okay, so lots to do here, right? Lots of fun stuff. Some common misconceptions, again, you wanna just start thinking about what do you think your students might be confused about? Well, they might think that, you know, predictions are facts, but we also know that weather is unpredictable and that climate change based on what's happening in other regions, it actually has this causal impact. Um, climate can change even within the state. We could look at the weather report for just California and notice how there is different climate in different parts of our state. Um, we can also talk about the seasons and the reasons for the different seasons in relation to the rotation of the sun and how, and I'm sorry, how our earth rotates around the sun and during winter, the earth is farthest from the sun and how that is changes based on where you live on the earth. Okay. So we as teachers might also have misconceptions about our students' ability to make predictions, our students' ability to organize data, our students' ability to research. So we wanna be explicit and direct and base our planning on students' prior knowledge, what they know and what skills we need to help support them with, okay? Some technology, uh, as a teacher, you know, if I have access to a smart board, I wanna try to show some video clips, uh, wacky weather videos are awesome. They're super fun. And the National Geographic has several of those. My students can also use Google Docs for weather journaling. They can just do a journal on the weather and they can share that. It could be a group activity. Uh, NCES, which is a government site, has data collection tools for students to organize their data in graphs and pie charts, bar graphs, whatever. And then I'm also going to use Kahoot for a technology game for my students to play to test and assess what they know about the climate and weather patterns. All right, so vocabulary versus academic language. The vocabulary are the specific words in relation to this particular um, science topic. So climate, weather, regions, temperature, humidity, meteorologists, right? Those are the people that are actually doing the job climate change, global warming. And then the academic language is the language, it's like the smart language. It's the language we wanna give our kids so that they can engage in um, articulating their ideas. So all of these standards, all of these things are gonna help us become more proficient in understanding the NGSS. Again, this is Dr. Dickinson, and I hope you enjoyed my video on unpacking our NGSS standard. See you next time.